Hi, folks. Uh, I'm Danny Martins. I'm one of the PMs on the PowerShell team. Uh, I don't really work on anything for PowerShell because I focus on SSH all the time. So uh, today we're going to be talking about what's new for SSH in Azure and Windows. Um, let's see. So what is actually new? So the big thing is OpenSSH will be installed by default in Windows Server 2025. Uh, historically, uh, OpenSSH has shipped as a feature on demand in both Windows Client and Windows Server. Uh, for server, it's an installed feature on demand or optional feature. And so you have to go and do an offline or a, a, a download and then enable to use SSH. Now you can just do a start service. You can go into server manage UI, group policy, unattend XML, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Why should you be interested in SSH for Windows Server? So the first thing is SSH is kind of the industry standard for remoting. If you look at remoting for Unix machine, Mac OS, IoT, networking devices, everything is using SSH. Windows has just long been the exception with WinRM and RDP. The next big thing, WinRM is no longer in feature development. It's been out of feature development for at least five years. Don't be building new things with R WinRM. <laughs> RDP isn't audible. Is that big enough? Can you all see that? OK, great. Uh, RDP isn't audible. You can't audit someone's mouse clicks if they're connecting to, to your server to audit their actions. How do you go and diagnose a, an issue if they've only done it with point and click? And next, uh, key-based authentication. OpenSSH supports key-based auth. WinRM does not support key-based auth. RDP does not support key-based auth. Key-based auth provides a much improved security posture over standard user and password auth. All right, that's the window side. How about the Azure side? So if you've come to this conference the past two years, I've been talking about this thing called SSH access to ARC-enabled servers, or if that's too big of a mouthful, which I think it is, I just call it Shark, because it makes it more fun. <laughs> Uh, Shark is now GA. It GA'd last summer. Uh, the great thing about Shark is if you an Arc enabled your machine, you can get public, uh, you can get access to the machine without a public IP address or a public or an inbound port. So you now have IPless access to an on-prem machine. Is, any, is everyone here familiar with Azure Arc? Yes, yes, yes. I see some no's, so we'll go through it. Arc. The way I think about Arc is the umbrella term for bringing Azure's management plane to non-Azure piece of hardware. And so that can be your on-prem server, that can be your data center, that can be your desktop at home, that can be a machine that's running, running in AWS or GCP. So basically taking that, uh, the richness of Azure management and bringing that into non-Azure hardware. All right, and the next thing is if you're not really ready to move fully over to SSH, SSH supports arbitrary port tunneling. And so if you need to fall back to RDP, you can do that really easily. So I kind of gone over what's new, what are you really here for? Demos. So I personally like to just show you things instead of talking about things. All right, so what are we gonna be looking at today? We're gonna kind of go through a story of enabling a new Windows Server 2025 machine uh, into Arc, uh, turning on SSH on that machine, Next, we're gonna connect via Azure PowerShell and native SSH. We're gonna enable key-based authentication, and then we're gonna actually use PowerShell remoting to connect to that machine, and then I'll show you the RDP fallback at the very end, and if we wanna go into any other uh, things like uh, cloud shell connectivity and things like that, we can do that as well. Okay, great. So here you can see, oh, come on. big. There we go. It's kind of small. Here I have a Windows Server 2025 image. Uh, if you're in a Microsoft Insider or Windows Server Insider, this image is already available. You can go and install that. Uh, but this is just the latest Insider build that's available. Uh, if I open up this machine, you kind of see the standard server manager UI uh, start here. We showed this a little bit in the state of the shell, but in the local server option, you now have options for remote SSH access, and Azure Arc enablement. 
And so if I want to enable this machine, I can just click. And my computer's going really slow today, so bear with me if I get any, <laughs> any hangs. So here I'm going to say, yeah, I want to connect. I want to sign into Azure. This is going to throw me for a two-factor auth in one second, so bear with me. Okay, great. So I've connected to Azure, and now I just need to select my tenant, my subscription, going too far. Let me just do this. There we go. My resource group, in this case, I already have a resource group for my ARC servers, and the region which we're in, which I'll just push West US3 because it's easy. Great. And now that's going to go, and uh, I already have the Arc Agent installed just because I was worried about downloads on the conference Wi-Fi, but this will install the Arc Agent, connect me to Azure, and you'll be able to view it in the Azure portal or with any Azure CLI or Azure PowerShell commands. While that's running, there's also the remote SSH enablement. Click. And here we're opening up a PowerShell window. All we're doing here is running start service. It's a big scary black box, but we're going to make it not as scary in the next update. So don't worry, there won't be just a random terminal that opens and closes on you. <laughs> All right, so now if I just like click off and come back, you can see those should both update to enable. So now if I flip over to a local, uh, a local prompt that is way too small, so let's make that bigger. Is that big enough, y'all? Cool. So for the demos today, I'm gonna to be connecting a lot to the machine I just showed and backing out. The way you can tell the difference, if it's a blue prompt, I'm on my client. If it's not blue, I'm on the, on the server. Okay, so that's just easier to follow along. So now that I've created that machine, actually I'll, sh I'll show it to you in Azure first, just so you know. Uh, here's the Azure portal, let's make that bigger. Okay, I already have a few existing uh, Arc machines. We'll refresh it. And we can see that newly created machine here, or newly onboarded, I should say, not created. And so what if I want to go and connect to this machine? Right? I talked about how you can do IPLS connections. How do you do that? Uh, what I showed during the state of the shell is just connecting from my phone. That was leveraging uh, Azure Cloud Shell. And so if you see this option here that says connect, if you click this connect option, you can enter your key, your password, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to connect. I'll do that a little bit later just because we want to I'll stick all local for now. Okay, so if I'm here, I can say enter AZVM. I had a tab arrow here. You get a little bit of a preview for later, but it's okay. So enter AZVM. This will work for both uh, an Arc enabled server as well as an, Arc, uh, an Azure uh, virtual machine. I supply my resource group name, my machine name, which you saw in the portal, administrator as my login, and I also supply a, a resource type, which is Microsoft.com, or Microsoft Hybrid Compute Machine. That basically means, hey, it's an Arc machine, not a machine that's hosted in Azure. It's just setting the resource type between an Arc machine and an Azure virtual machine. So enter this command. Great, it says, hey, you turned on SSH on the server, SSH is running, but do I want to let people connect with Arc on SSH, right? So just because you have SSH on the machine doesn't mean you're gonna want everyone to be able to connect. So in this case, Arc is saying, hey, do you wanna allow this connection on port 22? And I'm gonna say, yes, I do. That's restricted to uh, owners or contributors of that resource. And so if you're the admin, you wanna enable only for certain machines and you only have delegated access as readers or, uh, or uh, any other permissions just to log in, you don't have to worry about them enabling this functionality on those Arc machines. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can apply it centrally, yep. Uh, okay, any other questions? Feel free to raise your hand whenever, I don't mind stopping. Yeah, so this command, so this is just enter AZVM. Oh yeah, why do I have to su uh, supply the resource type? So this command, the enter AZVM, that will work for both an Azure virtual machine as well as an Arc machine, and we do something different 
whether it's a to connect, whether it's an Arc machine or a, a, an Azure machine. And so in this case, for the Arc machine, as part of the Azure PowerShell module, we install an SSH proxy. And so in order to do that, that's or that's needed for us to be able to provide that public or public IPless connection. Is so we have an SSH proxy that's uh, running on your client or when anytime you try to connect. And then on the server, we already have the Arc agent that's there when we onboard the machine. So that's how we can build that connection. Yeah, just. You could have something that's uh, the same name. And so a lot of, it's pretty common that people will have uh, an ARC resource and a VM that have the same name. And so specifying is the only way that we can do it. We could detect this, but it's just easier for the demo purposes when I'm talking about it to say like, yes, this is what it is. Uh, uh, we're working on it. The difference for, oh yeah, thank, I'm, I'm the worst about repeating questions. So Justin, I really appreciate it. The question was, uh, Linux supports AAD auth. Is there any chance that that's gonna come to Windows? It already exists for RDP. Uh, what's the chance of bringing that for SSH to have AAD auth for Windows? So it's, we're certainly aware of it. We're actively working on it. It's a harder problem to solve for Windows for SSH. Uh, there's a, something called PAM module on Linux, which lets you do like delegated access or uh, create accounts. Um, on Windows, that doesn't exist. The RDP AAD auth requires a domain or requires you not be on a domain. And so we're trying to build a solution where we don't have that restriction. And it can work if you're on a domain or if you're not on a domain. And so that's just why we just don't have it yet. We're trying to build a more complete solution. Yeah, last one, and then we're going to move on. Yeah, yeah. No. So you, if you, if you want to have SSH on a different, oh, yeah, repeat the question. Think, I'm, see, I, I told you I'm the worst. So if you have SSH running on not 22, which is pretty common, uh, you just specify that when you're onboarding the machine, and there's specific questions or specific commands that we provide in our docs that say how do you change it to be not be on 22. It just the only thing is this port needs to match what you have actual SSHD running on. So if you're running it on 33, you just change this to be 33. Okay, great. Now we're back into the kind of standard SSH flow. I'm connecting to a machine for the first time. I'm going to authentic uh, authenticate that fingerprint. How many people ever actually go and validate that that fingerprint is the machine you're actually connecting to? Anyone? Raise your hand, anyone? Great, okay. <laughs> Neither will I, yes. <laughs> All right, oh, okay, oops. All right, great. So now I'm connecting to that machine, we'll give it my password. All right. Now I've connected to the machine. You can see my prompt color changed. I'm on the server, woohoo. And if you don't believe me, we got a host name. And you can also see it, but there you go. All right, so now I've connected with Azure PowerShell. If you're more of an Azure CLI guy or lady, you have AZ SSH VM will also work. Uh, or if it's Arc machine, you can specify that it's an Arc machine instead of VM. Um, okay. So what if I want to use not Azure CLI or not Azure PowerShell? I want to use something with native SSH. I know there was an Ansible session before this, right? What if you want to use something that is SSH-based tooling, Ansible, right? We support uh, exporting what's called an SSH config file. And so we have this command, export az SSH config. And you can see I supply all the other same parameters, except they also give it a config file path, right? So this is taking all the details of this command and it's putting it in an SSH config file. In this case, foo.config, and I'll open that up so you, oh, perfect, here we go. So here you can see that it's creating uh, uh, a new config file and you can see just from like here down, this is the, what's gonna be in the config file. So anything that I specified in that uh, command is now showing up there. We have our, sorry, I'm running across the screen. We've got our resource group, VM name, there's another dash in the VM name, so ignore that, and then our user is the login, right? The really important thing about this SSH config, and I'm not gonna run across the stage this time, is this proxy command. This is what is allowing you to do that IPless connection. And so for SSH, all they need to do is pass this config file. And so if I wanna just say uh, SSH and uh, let's see, dash F, which is how you pass command, foo.config, and then I just need, oh, I already pushed arrow, that's fine. Uh, specify that same host name, so specify the same machine I'm gonna connect to, which is Arc Servers Win Word Vomit Administrator, right? 
can now run this command. I'll get prompted for that password again. And I'm back on that machine. Okay. So, so far we've enabled, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Here we go. Okay. So far we've enabled uh, SSH and uh, Azure Arc on the machine. We have Azure PowerShell, Azure CLI, native SSH connectivity working. What if you want to go and start using that key? What do you do? What's the next step? So I already have an SSH key that I like to use. Uh, I'm going to exit out of here. Great. So I already have a, a key that's just I have saved locally. How do I put that on the machine? I'm just going to copy and paste the block because it's a lot easier than me typing it in front of you all because there we go. So you can see here I have a key that's in my just uh, called art key. It's in my standard SSH folder. Um, and then I'm also building kind of a remote PowerShell script to put that key into my uh, administrator's known key file. It's also setting the permissions to make sure I can do that as an administrator. Uh, so great, I've specified my key, I've specified what I want to run on a remote host. All of this is detailed in our public SSH docs and our uh, ARC docs. They all link back to each other because this can be confusing. So now that I have this all connect, uh, all this defined, I can say that same SSH command. Let's just go up, up, up. And we can say remote PowerShell. Click. Hopefully do the password for the last time. Actually the last time. <laughs> okay, great. So now you can see it's successfully processed one file. So now it's gone and put that content in that key file. So if I take that same command that I had before, and now I have to give it, I don't have a, it's not a standard key path, so I'll give it the path to my key. And I'm connected to that machine. Great. So now I've connected with a key. What if I want to do PowerShell remoting? This is where things get a little bit harder to set up. Uh, it's not as fun. And so, but let's do it together. <laughs> right. So I'm already connected to this machine. Right? Uh, let's start by saying, how do I step my default shell? You can see here, I'm not in PowerShell. I'm just, if I do like a PS version table, nothing there, no tab completion, nothing. I'm just here in CMD, right? How do I go and set my actual uh, default shell? In this case, PowerShell 7 doesn't ship in, in uh, Windows Server 2025. So you need to do a win git install. Win git install. Uh, or yeah, that's not what I want. Install ID PowerShell. I'm not going to do it because I was worried about Corp Wi-Fi. So or not Corp Wi-Fi, conference Wi-Fi. I already have it installed. So um, okay. And if you let's see. So now I have it installed. I tried it earlier. It took five minutes. I wasn't going to waste the time. Sorry. <laughs> so here. I just installed it. I'll open Windows PowerShell because this terminal doesn't know about uh, PowerShell 7 yet. It hasn't updated those paths. So we'll just open Windows PowerShell. I'll put in a new item property. Basically what this is saying is saying, hey Windows, for OpenSSH, I want to set a new default shell and it's the file path to my PowerShell 7. Right? This is also in our documentation. I'll have links to all of our docs afterwards. Setting up, this is not fun, so I apologize. <laughs> Great. So now we have the default shell set for SSH. If I back out, exit a PowerShell, exit out of my SSH session, we'll connect one more time. You can see this time, look, PowerShell 7. We're already there. So if you don't, can't read it, there's your PSV version table, and there's a little nicer. Right. OK. So now I at least have PowerShell 7 on the box. I have it set as my default shell. I still can't just use PowerShell remoting. If I go and let's see, we'll exit out of here. Let's try it. What happens? So if I say new PS session, there we go. Give it my host, give it my uh, key file path. We'll, we'll do more than that to start. Host name, not that either. Arc, did, I can't see if I got it. Okay. Arc, when, foo, 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 like blah, blah, blah. Great, still not going to work. Because if you think about our SSH command, we provide that config file, right? How do we provide that config file for, for PowerShell? 
You can't. We don't have that yet. We have an open bug for it, and we just haven't done it. Okay. So if I connect back to the machine, oh, that's not what I want to do. We'll kill that. Connect back to the machine. We'll use our key because that's what we might want to do, right? It's more secure. There we go. Okay, we're back to connect to the machine. How do we go and set up SSH to actually know about PowerShell NetBox? We have, for SSH, we have a uh, config file. It's located in C, program data, SSH, SSHD config. Again, not super fun, but it's buried in program data. And look, here are all your settings for SSH server. Isn't it pretty? No, it's not. It's a pain to read, it's a pain to configure, it's a pain to manage, right? Yeah. So you can see here I've got this whole big text file, right? And the thing that I care about is this section called subsystems. How would you know that you care about subsystems? You would know it from our docs. There's not really any other way that you would know, right? That's about it. So here, there's already the subsystem for SFTP, which is secure file, uh, like SSH file transfer protocol. We need to basically add that same thing for PowerShell. How do we do that? Well, again, because it's not, it's not easy, I have this big block of text I'm gonna paste in and we'll go through it again. Oops. Great, so here I'm saying, hey, I've got this config file, here's the path. And then I'm gonna read the content of that config file into my lines variable, right? Then I'm gonna go and find the line that looks like a subsystem, and I'm gonna put another, li another line that says, hey, add this PowerShell subsystem. And then I'm gonna put it all back in that file. And you might say, hey, why can't I just append? Why can't I just put it at the top? Why can't I put it at the bottom? SSHD cares about where's, where things are in that file. So if I just put it at the end, it's not gonna work. If I put it at the beginning, it might not work, right? It needs to be in the proper spot, and since we already have an SSH or a subsystem defined, let's just put it next to the subsystem. Great. So now let's do that same cat, look at the, pro, uh, the config file, and you can see here, great, I have PowerShell set as a subsystem. Woohoo, we're good to go, right? No. Because for SSH, the state of the file does not mean that's the run state. And so you have to restart your service. And so we're gonna say restart. Great, restart the service. Now we're good. And the restart service is actually quick enough to than the, quicker than the SSH timeout, so the service restarted and I didn't really even disconnect, so it's kind of fun. <laughs> so okay, so now we should be good. So we'll restart service, and now we'll go back to that new PS session, right? Oh wait, I still need to provide that config file. How do I do that? Like I mentioned before, we don't have a way of passing a config file, and we have How do we get this information that's already in the config file, right? So if you're familiar with SSH, there's this, there, SSH also has different parameters. Or, uh, and so for PowerShell remoting, if we say new PS session, you've probably seen it because spoilers, we have this options parameter. The options parameter matches whatever the options are for uh, SSH. So if you wanna go look at the SSH man page and look at the 50 different options to configure and set, those are all definable in this, op in this options uh, hash table. In our case, there's not much that we care about in options besides the proxy command. Yeah, this is, you gotta be on latest for this. So pr pre 7.4, uh, there wasn't way, a way of specifying options. It was, sorry, you're out of luck. If, unless you're going on a public IP address or a, a, or a line of sight within your, within your network, 
there's no way of connecting uh, or specifying like, hey, I want to do some port forwarding. We didn't have options to do that. Now supporting the options parameter, you can do that with uh, just using the SSH options. Okay, right, so yeah. What do I care about in options? In our case, we only really care about this proxy command. And I just replicated that on options. And you might say, Danny, there are different proxy commands. Because this one's the one for Azure PowerShell, and this is the one for Azure CLI, and this area path was, this file path was just a little cleaner, so I used that one instead. <laughs> okay, so set my options. We can say new PS session and options. Oh, wait, didn't want to do that. Since I'm going to be connecting the whole time, let's set it to a, uh, just a new session variable. So we'll just do session. That's better. Specify your host name, specify the same administrator, uh, key file path, et cetera. And you might say, why didn't I supply that information in the options hash table? It's because it all gets overwritten if you put it in the, uh, as a PowerShell prompt, or as a PowerShell uh, parameter. So anything that's in the hash will get overwritten if it's in, in PowerShell. Great, got a new session, and we can just look at the session. Okay, so we have a session. You can see that it's going to go over SSH, and we can say enter, uh, that's not what I want, enter PS session. Okay, great, I'm on that machine. So finally, after all those steps, and it's very complicated, uh, you can get a PowerShell remoting session. And so what have we done, right? We enabled the machine into ARC. We enabled SSH. We're able to use Azure PowerShell or Azure CLI or a native SSH uh, uh, command, and really native SSH is going to be, be used here, to connect without, that, without a public IP address. We put a key on it so we get uh, more secure connectivity. And we did everything that we need to do to set up PowerShell remoting over SSH, which is a lot. I can tell you had a question. <laughs> yeah, so the, question, the, the statement was you could also use like run command or enable PS remoting. Yes, there are more simple ways to do this to just say, yeah, here's my script block, go and run this, right? Run command is a newer addition to Arc enabled servers that didn't exist a few months ago. Uh, and in this case, I find it better to tell you all the steps because there's a lot of things here that you might get hung up on, right? And going through each one of the steps individually is important to say like, hey, this needs to be done for a reason, not just like copy and place this block and use that to connect, right? Or use that to enable connectivity. Okay, right. so I've connected over SSH, PowerShell remoting, great. So what if you're not ready to use SSH? What if you don't have, uh, you don't want to put PowerShell there, uh, or PowerShell 7 there, you want to keep connecting over RDP, or you just need a break glass scenario to go back and use a GUI if you need one, right? What are you going to do? So if we jump back to that first command, so the enter AZVM, where this is the original step we had, right? I, this doesn't matter about setting my default shell. This doesn't care about me changing my subsystem. This doesn't care about me installing PowerShell 7, right? Here, we also support that key file, so we'll keep using that key. But we also support this dash RDP parameter. Like I said before, SSH allows arbitrary port forwarding. So what this is doing is it's setting up an SSH tunnel from a local host to 3389 on my remote host. So you can't see it on this machine. We'll drag it over. But this failed. Now, why did this fail? Just like we had enable uh, ARC and SSH remoting on the server, we have to enable PowerShell remoting, or not PowerShell remoting, RDP access, right? So we can take that same session and we can just do an OAK command. And so here, this is the, if you look at the docs, this is the command to enable uh, remote desktop, right? So I'm doing a vote command with that, uh, that command to enable remote desktop, run it, and we'll just hop back here and say connect again. Here, it's using my SSH key because I specified it in my command. It's creating the SSH tunnel. It's using my SSH key to do that. But then I still have to auth to RDP. RDP, like I mentioned before, doesn't support keys. We still have to fall back to our username and password. 
And oh, I messed it up. Hmm. An added benefit of keys. You don't have to mess up passwords on stage. And oh, it's yelling at me to disconnect this one. <gasps> okay. And now you can see here, I've connected to that same machine. You can see that the name matches, and I'm just connecting as localhost. Uh, where'd it go? There it is, localhost. And so here I have a localhost port that's open, and my SSH tunnel is forwarding that traffic from my localhost to 3389 on the remote host. Great. Question. So the, the question was, what if you're not using Arc? What if you're not using Azure? So you can do that. And so if I have, we'll close this. And so what you can do is this dash SSH, and we'll get rid of some of these. Uh, you can do like a dash L. I don't know if I've done it on this machine, and a dash N. But essentially, you go in and you say, I want to create a tunnel from whatever port you want to use locally. So let's just say like 33389 to 3389, right? And we'll say like localhost here. Uh, and basically I'm saying I'm gonna connect, I want to connect my 3389 to 33389 locally to 3389 on my remote host. That's what the dash L does. The dash N basically says don't throw me a prompt. And that's how you connect. That's also all in our documentation, uh, just because you can still do that port forwarding. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, ARC or not. Correct. So if you're not using ARC, then you still need that some sort of line of sight, either that network access or a public IP address. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So and even anything will work over this. So if you want to do WinRM over this, if you want to do HTTP over this, I don't know why you would, but you can, right? But if you wanted to kill your RDP access already, you can already do it and start pointing people to SSH. Okay, great. And I am almost to my time, but we'll keep going. So I mentioned before, uh, we can connect in Cloud Shell. So if we go back to my Arc machines, you can, where's my mouse? You can see that this, this is still that same, same machine as before. I wanna connect with key-based auth. I've already set that up. We'll specify administrator. We'll uh, use a key. I have a key in Key Vault, so I'll specify that key. Okay, now I can just say connect in browser. What this is going to do is it's going to open a Cloud Shell session. Oops. Open a Cloud Shell session, and it's going to automatically inject that command. And because we're not using WinRM, and we're not using RDP, we're using a Linux container, we have SSH. So this command is just gonna go and connect. And it's yelling at me because I've already connected to this machine, but I restarted it, and it is so it doesn't like my known host. <laughs> so we'll go and change that. So that's, let's see, ls, uh, where am I at? cd.ssh uh, code known host. Oh yeah, that's fine. We'll just do this. Basically, this is a security thing of SSH based thinking that I'm being man in the middle attacked. I've connected to this uh, machine with the same name before, and now it's saying, hey, that fingerprint of the machine has changed. This, someone's doing something suspicious. You're not gonna be able to connect. So if I delete mine, what is it? All right, I'm, yeah. So if I get rid of that file saying, hey, these are all the machines that I know about, and we click that same command that was injected. Now it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna to connect to this machine? Are you gonna validate that fingerprint? Nope. <laughs> uh, oh, it doesn't have my key anymore. Let's just, let's just start this over. You know, we'll, just do, we'll, do, we'll just do this. Click, click. Hey, look, first try. You know? <laughs> okay, so now I'm back on the machine. All right. Uh, so someone had asked about AAD auth. Uh, currently, that's Linux only, uh, but it is supported for Arc machines. So this is a Windows, mach Windows machine that we're connecting to. I do have a Linux machine that is here. So when I go and connect to a Linux machine, and I hit connect, 
I have an option for Microsoft Entra, which is A80. And if I have that set up, I can just say connect in browser, don't have to fiddle with keys or passwords. I am very satisfied. <laughs> and do I want to connect? Yes. And now I'm connected. If you're using Entra ID login, you're not going to connect as a specific user. You're going to connect at basically your email. At my, at, for me, it's my alias at Microsoft.com. But um, yeah. Any other questions? Also, if you're wanting to use RDP or any of the stuff I showed you, uh, instead of using a key-based auth, you can do it with AAD-based auth. And so if you want to connect to a Linux machine and you're using AAD there already, you just don't supply a key file or a local user that you want to connect to, and you can connect with AAD. Any questions? That was a lot of information. So if you followed along, I am proud of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so how would you do this all on-prem? So this, so let's go back out of here. So on, okay. So if I wanted to do this all on-prem, not much would change except the first commands that I was using to connect with like the enter AZVM, I wouldn't need to do. If I'm on-prem, I theoretically already have a way of connecting to the machine, whether it's with PowerShell remoting, uh, over WinRM, if it's physical access to that machine. You just skip the first few steps. Everything else is the same. If all the intermediate steps where I put a key in or uh, uh, I enabled the default shell or installed PowerShell 7, none of those required that it was on ARC. And that's why I wasn't using this, this enter AZ VM command for a lot of it. I was using that SSH, the, the SSH commands with the config file. So like this command, right? Because the only thing that would change for you is you would basically just not have this dash F foo config. And you could just go connect with a public, the IP address within your network. Other questions? SSH is a lot, and it's a hard problem in Windows, and we are still very early, and it's been steps. So this is the first step in having SSH there, right? We're now, we're in the door, right? Now comes the next step is how do we make it easy, right? So next year, hopefully, you come back, and all of these steps won't be there. <laughs> we just say click, and it works. <laughs> yeah, question. And so now that, I'd say now that SSH is in Bach. Exactly. Exactly. Yep, and so we're, we're working on really the configuration and management of SSH, right? The big push has been, let's get, it, let's get in the door, right? We need to be in Windows. We need to be there for people who are ready to adopt this. We're there now, right? Or whenever Windows Server 2025 is GA, right? We're there. The next step is how do we make that configuration and policy and management of it easier? We have things like the SSH extension in Azure that we'll go and install, but the next step is how do we go and manage SSH deconfig or how do we manage those keys, right? So those are all things that we're thinking about. We just haven't gotten to that step yet. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, in the preview, this question is, will we see the OpenSSH updates in the server pre-releases Insider builds, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is the Insider build. So if you are part of uh, Windows Insider, you can go and get this already, right? As time goes on, we can we have minimal updates that we can do to actual insiders. There'll be small things like what I talked about with it not just being a scary black box that pops up and goes away, right? Adding prompts there is is kind of the next step. And then the way that SSH ships in Windows is we update each Windows release. And so as long as you're on the latest Windows, you'll have the latest OpenSSH. Uh, if you're not, then you'll need to install the latest either from GitHub or we're moving to support WinGit as well. There was another question I thought I saw come up. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the difference for, I'd say, PowerShell getting things from Windows Update versus OpenSSH, OpenSSH is in box, right? And we ship as a feature on demand, so we're already considered inbox. We're just not installed by default, if that makes sense. And so we're, we're, it's like the concept of, hey, we're there, but it's just kind of a, a dummy button. When you click it, it's going to install it for the first time, right? The 
updating process and requirements and eligibility for something that's considered in box is very different than what's actually installed from the store. And so we have different servicing bar requirements. We have different cadences in which we can actually release an update. And so as much as I would love to be able to say like, yeah, we're going to update as frequently or as easily as we can with, with PowerShell, with it being an app from the store or something like that, or with like Moo, we can't do that. Winget is really our avenue to be able to do that. And so that's something that we're hoping to add support uh, for later this year. And if you're familiar with SSH, like here, you can see that on my OpenSSH client, I'm on 8.6, right? But on the server, when I connected, I was on 9.5, right? So there's a big discrepancy in those versions. And that's just because the version, the Windows client that I have is just older than the server, the server version I have, right? And so once we go and move to adopt to scene supporting Winget, we can actually keep both of those on the same versions. Yeah. So the question was, is it supported on Windows client? So right now, and even like here, if I just pull up, if you, uh, if you pull up like your optional features or like install features, let's see, optional features. I know you can't see this yet. Yeah, I know you can't see it yet. Hold on. I did a extend, not a mirror. So if you just search optional features, we already shipped this way, right? And so you can see OpenSSH client and OpenSSH server are already here. OpenSSH client ships already enabled on all Windows OSs already. And so, yeah, so, yeah, so personally, I have my, my Windows machine at home that's just my desktop, and it's, I've onboarded it into Arc. Now, technically, Arc doesn't support like Windows client as much as it supports Windows server, but as long as that machine's on frequently enough, it shouldn't make a difference, right? And so I use that to connect to my machine back at home, right? And I like to do a lot of either IoT things or like 3D modeling. And so I use SSH if I just need to connect to my IoT Raspberry Pi device. And then if I can't do 3D modeling over SSH, so I'll do my RDP tunnel to connect and get an RDP session and do my 3D modeling on my desktop. So the same thing will work for your, for your clients. Your just support structure will just be a little bit different. Cool. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah, so if I'm using PS Session, does it have a dependency on the OpenSSH client? Yes. So if you're going to use new PS Session, we're going to look for our inbox OpenSSH. And that's just from a security point of view. We want to know that the bits that we're using are signed and packaged by us and not some other OpenSSH that you used. You can theoretically go and change that, but I would recommend keeping what we have because if there's a security fix, we're gonna have patched it. And I don't know if you all seen the news, there was a big SSH exploit last week. So uh, doesn't infect Windows, so that's good. So <laughs> yeah. Other questions? Okay, great. Um, I'm happy to stick around if there's other more individualized questions uh, or talk with y'all at the party or tomorrow. So, yeah. <laughs>